idea what's going on in TV Spine. I've been reading this book for hours and it still makes no sense. I know it's really difficult. I also had trouble with it. Let me try and explain. TB spine is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is transmitted by droplet spread. Thereafter, through hematogenous or lymphatic spread from primary or secondary infection, which is usually pulmonary infection, the spine is infected. The lower thoracic and upper lumbar vertebra, T8 to L3, are most commonly affected. Risk factors for TB include social conditions such as overcrowding, low socioeconomic status, migration to TB endemic areas, as well as the HIV epidemic. Generalized symptoms include night sweats, loss of weight and malaise, amongst other constitutional symptoms. Specific signs and symptoms include axial back pain, acute back deformity, and neurological deficits. The onset of symptoms in TB spine is typically more insidious than in pyogenic infection. Differential diagnosis of TB spine includes pyogenic spondylodiscitis, tumor, and congenital kyphosis due to hemivertebra. To differentiate between TB spine and pyogenic spondylodiscitis, it is important to look at the vertebral bodies and discs as well as erosions. When investigating TB spine, start off with blood tests, followed by radio imaging. The gold standard investigation is an MRI, which best shows extradural cord compression. Since TB is the great mimicker, a diagnostic biopsy is mandatory. Whether it be by an open biopsy, which is done in South Africa, or a CT guided biopsy with cultures and staining. The management of TB spine can be divided into operative and non operative interventions. Non operative interventions include pharmacological treatment, that being Rifofor for nine months. This includes isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol. Spinal orthoses can also be used for symptomatic relief. Indications for surgery include neurological deficits to correct any deformities such as kyphosis or gibbous, the evacuation of abscesses and for open diagnostic biopsy as mentioned earlier. Complications of TB spine include deformities such as kyphosis and gibbous after anterior compression and grafting, pot paraplegia, sinus formation, respiratory compromise, and TB arteritis and pseudoaneurysm. Do you have a better understanding now? I think I do. You've given me a really good grounding, but I still don't know how to manage these patients. To be honest, I still don't know. But I think at our level, it's just important to know when to refer. I did find this long list of things the authors do, if you really want to know.